Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our 20th annual Mentor Appreciation Night. We are so very excited to have so many of our participants, mentors, mentees, and supporters joining us this evening. We are thrilled to celebrate our dedicated and vibrant community. Please take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat and let us know where you are tuning in from tonight. January is National Mentoring Month and tonight is all about celebrating the power of relationships. As President Biden recently shared in his proclamation of National Mentoring Month, during National Mentoring Month, we honor all those parents and family members, teachers and coaches, employers and coworkers, community and faith leaders, and so many others who devote time, care, and energy to helping young people thrive. Mentoring is at the core of everything that we do at Partners for Youth with Disabilities. Our one-to-one -one mentoring program has been around since PYD's founding in 1985. And the power of transformative relationships is infused throughout all of our creative arts, leadership development, career readiness programs, and national initiatives. This year, our mentoring programs and participants accomplish so much which you will get to see and hear in more detail when you hear directly from our participants. We are deeply grateful for each of you here today that makes up the PYD community. And our theme of the night is Stronger Together, as we know that human connection is something needed now more than ever. Tonight, we will see the impact that these incredible mentors and participants have had on the lives of youth with disabilities. To give you a sense of the schedule, Regina, our founder and executive director, will share remarks. We will have live entertainment from Open Door Arts. We will present awards to our amazing honorees and hear from them. And then we will have an interactive after party. So get excited. Please grab your art supplies if you'd like to participate in the open door arts activity. And to kick off the event, we're excited to share a video that highlights more about our programs and the importance of mentoring. Mentoring is important because uh, at the heart of our humanity is our connection to each other. Mentoring is at the core of all that we do at PYD. And the reason is that relationships matter. Mentoring has many benefits. We have seen that mentored youth have a more positive attitude towards school. They have an increase in self-esteem. They improve their communication skills and ability to speak up for themselves, their ability to advocate. They also are more connected to the community. PYD is amazing in terms of making sure that we are inclusive in everything that we do at Mentor. So that's from our public facing campaigns to our actual training materials and guides to our live training sessions that we do with mentoring programs around the country. We know that relationship uh, makes a difference in terms of outcomes for young adults and youth with disabilities. Those relationships that provide role modeling and provide that caring individual who can be your champion um, during hard times and victories. We've been we've been doing this thing pretty consistently for the last four years, um, 
and I feel like Amy's been an integral part of my my success in high school, and she'll continue to be a big part of my life. It's a mentor I feel more comfortable talking about things that happen. Mentoring for PYD has been a great experience. I initially joined because I identify as disabled, and it was important for me to show disabled representation in mentorship and leadership. Some of my favorite moments specifically more are, I guess, would be that now that PYD is this old, we have mentors that have grown up and now are in their 30s and 40s and they're giving back. So it's being passed on. I think all of us can look back at a time in our lives where we either were striving towards a goal or we were struggling and we can point to who was our mentor during that time. There is something very powerful about representation. When you see the way in which that young person can see the possibility for themselves and an adult who has the same disability. It's not that we always have to match this way, but man, is it powerful. And I've just seen that time and time again. PYD really made an important effort to match me with the right mentor. She also has a disability herself, but she is a big role model in my life. When I matched my mentee, it was such a great experience. Um, we connected, in addition, our mothers connected over having disabled children, and it really felt like this ingrained uh, unit in our family. We found PYD when my son was about 15, 16 years old, and he participated in a peer mentoring program and was partnered with a college sophomore at the time who really got him and taught him so much about life and friendship. He even went to her wedding. And we are so lucky to be matched with each other. It started as a very structured, traditional match where we set goals with each other. We, and we celebrated each other's achievements. We talked every week. We saw each other once a month. And since then, our relationship has just grown so much and turned this into this really organic friendship, relationship, support system that we know we can celebrate each other. We know that this friendship is gonna last moving forward and that we can rely on each other. We know innately in our hearts that mentoring matters and we've seen in PYD's program outcomes that it makes a significant difference for young people with disabilities when they're meeting their goals. Through our partnership with PYD, we've been able to take the Mentoring Connector and really highlight programs that have gone through disability inclusion trainings and elevate them and their status within the search results. So the programs that are going through those trainings are, are showing up higher in the results and therefore getting more volunteers. But also the volunteers that come into their doors, they're gonna be better equipped to make sure to serve all young people, including young people with disabilities. And that's really a credit to Mentor's partnership with PYD and PYD's real expertise in the space. And something that I've seen for mentors, mentees, and families is that although it starts in a very structured relationship, it often can transform into something where the mentor is like family to the mentee and to the family members. And so that's really wonderful to see. I wouldn't have had those opportunities if I had never never gotten in touch with PYD, if I had never been connected with PYD back in middle school. Um, it feels so long ago, but honestly, at the same time, it feels like just yesterday that I had met Amy. So this time has flown by, and I just want to thank Amy for sticking along for the ride. Mentor, she There is nothing like mentoring and role modeling to change the life of a young person with a disability. I think we just really wanted to thank PYD for, for bringing us together. I think PYD and, and this relationship, this match, has truly changed my life and, um, and I really don't know kind of what this would look like without the past four years working with PYD. Um, it definitely spurred me to do that LEND Fellowship, like Tom mentioned, which is a professional training program re related to um, interdisciplinary healthcare fields and uh, disability, and specifically neurodevelopmental disability. And it's truly been a, a guiding factor in my life. So thank you so much for bringing us together.
We hope that you enjoyed hearing from our community. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Regina Snowden, PYD's founder and executive director. Hello, welcome. I am so happy all of you who have joined us for Mentor Appreciation Night. This is one of my favorite nights of the year because we celebrate the success of our mentors and our participants. I'm truly honored that these amazing individuals are part of the PYD family. They're resilient and inspirational and we all love hearing their stories. I'm very excited to share that in celebration of the 20th Mentor Appreciation Night, we have added a fundraiser to honor our mentors and mentees and ensure that these vital programs continue. More support for these programs mean more youth can be matched with a mentor. We've created Stronger Together 20 years of mentoring. With the help of mentors, mentees, parents, program participants, alumni, staff, and a generous $10,000 match, we've already raised over $10,000. I want to make a special shout out to Josh Jones, who I've known so long, and Rivka Barrett, a wonderful former AOM, Ambassador of Mentoring, who is our top individual fundraiser. All of these top prizes will be entered into a raffle for a chance to win some awesome prizes. We've got Xbox gaming system. We have tickets to the New England Aquarium, to the Essex, you know, Peabody Essex Museum, the House of the Seven Gables, and more. I'm thrilled to announce that we have received another match of 15,000 because uh, of this exciting donation, we're actually extending the fundraising deadline to February 25th. We hope that you will join in the excitement and create your own fundraising page team and help us to get to our $50,000 goal. You can visit the campaign page or team and help us get there. You can easily share it with friends and family. If you would like assistance creating your fundraising page or team, please submit your information in the form link in the chat. We hope that you will join in in the fun and the support of PYD's mentoring programs in this meaningful way. We're so grateful for all that each of you do for this organization in countless ways. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Regina. And big congratulations to Rivka and Josh. And earlier today, we learned of two more awesome prizes for our top fundraisers, which are tickets to the American Reportory Theater in Boston and gift cards for Biddy and Bo's Coffee in Melrose. So hopefully, these are fun motivators for you to join in in our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. And now I am happy to welcome and introduce you to Elizabeth Buck, who is manager of studio class programs at Worcester Art Museum. Elizabeth is joining us on behalf of Open Door Arts Gallery, which is an affiliate of Seven Hills Foundation. Annually, Open Door Arts works with more than 3,000 students, teaching artists, educators, and leaders of cultural organizations through innovative and inclusive programming, training, events, and exhibits designed to improve access, expand participation, challenge the status quo, and share practices to ensure equitable representation by people with disabilities in the arts. Elizabeth is here with us to share the work of artists Sam Tomasillo and his exhibition 
vibrantly still. Elizabeth has created many classes and programs for adults with disabilities served at Open Door Arts. She also created simple lessons based on Sam's work or artwork, which she will be doing with us tonight. So we're so excited to welcome you, Elizabeth. Sam Tomasiello is an artist with autism who lives and works in central Massachusetts. The pieces in his exhibit, Vibrantly Still, on display at the Open Door Gallery in the Worcester Art Museum, feature a set of still lifes brought to life through rich and bold colors. Using oil pastels, Sam depicts fruits and vegetables, including pears, clementines, tomatoes, and cherries. Containers such as mugs and plant pots, as well as plants and flowers, which he positions over a solid color surface against a contrasting solid color background. The objects he portrays often leave colorful shadows underneath them and are outlined in black, adding to the contrast. In this video, we can see the artist at work creating a new piece featuring his favorite clementines as well as a photo of the finished work. Enjoy! Hello everyone! I'm assuming that you'll be able to see me very shortly. Here I am. <laughs> so my name is Liz or Elizabeth. I am here from the Worcester Art Museum and I've been working with Open Door Arts for a few years now. I was very happy to be able to see Sam Tomasiello's work in person and excited that we get to celebrate it together today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my backdrop in order to show you some works from the West Art Museum and Sam, and then we're going to be able to work together on a work inspired by Sam's work. All right, so I'll just be changing my virtual background. There's a few different ways to participate today. You can just watch if you want. Um, you can watch and talk. So you can chat if you want. And if I'm able to, I can answer questions. And the third way you can participate is by watching, talking, and creating if you have anything with you today. If you want to work with us today, all you'll actually need is a paper or a sketchbook, something to create on and a pencil or a pen, something to create with. I know options that were given to you were crayons and colored pencils. We also have Play-Doh and clay as options. Those are all completely fine. And if you don't have anything with you right now, you can just watch and remember and do this later. So just to show you, I'll be using a piece of paper. I'll be using a marker to draw with because it picks up on the video a little bit easier than a pencil. And just like Sam, I'm going to use oil pastels, which are just like soft crayons. All right. First, I already did my intro. Then I'm going to sort of do a this or that so you can think about different things about art. And then we're going to do a quick museum tour. We're going to be doing uh, some creating time together and then uh, just sharing time. You can share with everybody that's around you. So here we go. We're going to go into this or that. What we're going to be looking at today in art, both Sam's art and some other pieces from the museum, are lines. We have all sorts of lines in art. Um, and line is one of the original elements of art. There are straight lines, there are squiggly lines, so many different types. So think, if you were an artist and you could only pick 
one type of line, which would it be? Hmm. I know for me, I would always pick number two right here, the squiggly line. Now, lines aren't only just different shapes. They can be different thicknesses. We have thin lines that could be straight or curvy. We have thick lines that could be straight or curvy. So think about like, what would your preference be if you had to pick one of the two? Would you pick thick? Would you pick thin? Yeah, you can share what your line of choice is in the chat. I see that a few people on like straight lines. So feel free to share in the chat because I definitely have that open. So as I said, this is sort of a, oh, I see squiggly lines, straight lines, thick and thin, so many options coming in and nobody's wrong. This isn't a question looking for a right answer. It's the great thing about art. Uh, everybody can have their own favorites, their own opinions, and we can all come together and still be artists. Now is the point where we're going to take a quick tour through the Worcester Art Museum. If you haven't been to the museum, this is what it looks like on the outside on a nice day. There is snow in front of it right now. And what we do is we go right inside. We have stairs and a ramp to get in. We walk into the Renaissance court and you can see all of the different areas around here that we have galleries in. And we'll walk into a pretend gallery. So this is a gallery that has a lot of color and a lot of um, sort of smell to it. It smells a little musty, uh, it smells a little humid. And we have to keep the rooms that way to protect the paintings. We usually use fairly light walls. So this is a, a light butter color with a wood floor. And we have a lot of golden frames in here. The nice thing about teaching on Zoom, you don't have to worry about bumping into a painting. You can touch your screen and none of the guards will come and talk to you. <laughs> so the first thing that we're going to be looking at is a stained glass window. So this one is a stained glass window, which means that they use different pieces of glass and then lines of lead in between to sort of stick the glass together. I picked this piece of art as the first to look at because it has very definite lines. We can see the lead lines, and lead is a metal that they use uh, to connect the pieces. We can also see on the person's face that they've painted. So this image is a zoomed in image of what looks like a person with angel wings with a halo. They're wearing white loose robes. They have white wings and everything's very pastel and pale, but those black lines are very dark. And so they contrast just like Sam's work that we saw in the video. Now we find lines in all types of work. It doesn't just have to be oil pastels. It doesn't just have to be in stained glass. So we're gonna look at a couple of different types of work too. This is a woodblock print. Uh, so this piece is by Udagawa Kunamasa and is from 1795. So this is a good couple hundred years old. Being a print, it's almost like a rubber stamp that has been carved into wood and they have to print it several times to get all of these colors in. Because it's carved, it has a lot of different lines in it. This is the whole image on this side. And I zoomed in so that we could focus on the face. Here we have an actor of the EY line. And we can see that they have their hair done. Their hair is all black. They have a white face because the actors all wore makeup 
They often wore masks. We can also see that they have very stylized clothing, a clothing, <laughs> and they have very strong lines because of the printing process. So this gallery, I see a few questions. This gallery is located in Worcester, and this is one of our play, uh, one of our pieces that isn't on display right now. So that's one of the other neat things about teaching online. It's like we can give you a sneak peek into our back galleries where things are stored. So the next thing that we're going to look at is a painting because we've seen stained glass, we've seen a print, and now we're going to look at a painting. Now this one is on view. Its title is Houses and Rigsy. It's by Gabrielle Munter. And this is from a little over 100 years ago. It's from 1909. This also has very strong black lines. We see very bold colors. There are two buildings. There's one on the left and one on the right. One is at an angle to us. The sun is really bright on one side of the artwork because it is really shining on one side of the house. So the house is very white on one side and then sort of a dark pink where the shadows are. There's a very bright blue sky above, dark leaves on the right hand side for a tree that's sort of framing above the second building and a lot of green grass on the bottom. There's not a lot of detail to this painting. It's sort of the big shapes of different colors. Uh, and it uses black in between those shapes, sort of like San Tomasiello does. One of the things that I love about this piece, which is hung in our museum, is that it's painted with oil paints, but it's actually painted on a piece of cardboard. Uh, if you come to the museum, you can actually look closely and see the cardboard behind it. So don't think that you always have to go and buy something really fancy like canvas to do real art on uh, because real artists just make art that has their heart happy. And we have some of that at the museum. Let's pop over and look at Sam's pieces. This is one of the pieces that I love. And I threw a piece, uh, a picture of Sam up here too. Um, so this piece of his is called Three Yellow Tomatoes. It's by Sam Tomasiello, and this is made with oil pastels. So here we have three yellow circles. They each have a little green star sort of towards the top of them. We have a strong line behind them about halfway up the page with a purple top and a brown bottom. So it's like the three yellow tomatoes are sitting on a green table with a purple wall behind them. Um, I see that someone says the colors are so interesting and they are, they're very bright and very bold. And not all of his pieces are like this. I have another one just to look at. This piece is a little bit less bright and bold. Here we have three medium sized circles sitting on top of a bunch of small circles that are the top of a bowl. That bowl is on a plate and that's all on a table. The oranges are orange, the bowl is gray, the plate is light green, and the table is white. And it's all in front of a blue background. And it's sort of a green blue. But we can see here that between this piece and the other, Sam uses a lot of bright shapes and those dark lines to really help the colors pop. So just like Gabrielle Munter used really bright colors and dark lines, Sam does too. This is one of the pieces that I would like to use as an inspiration piece while we create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my video so that you'll be able to see my hands. And then I'll have to get rid of my background because otherwise you won't be able to see them.
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using my marker just on my piece of paper. I am going to draw some pairs today. Um, and if you wanted to draw pairs along with me, you can do that. If you wanted to draw your own favorite fruit, uh, maybe your favorite is clementines like Sam, you could do that. I'm gonna start with the fruit and it's gonna be towards the middle of my paper. If you want to use clay, then you can actually form the shapes out of the clay that you have and you can make them big in 3D or you can just draw using clay lines up to you. I'm gonna draw maybe three sort of C's that are facing up. So they're facing up like this. I have one on this side. I'm gonna put one in the middle and then I'm gonna put one on the other side too. Now these are the bottoms and then I'm gonna make them come up sort of like an upside down tulip. So it's a curve that's gonna come up and down and over and then up, down and over, up, down and over. And they don't have to be perfect. We're gonna add a lot of color and fun stuff to them. The reason I drew the pairs first, especially when using a marker, is I can't erase. And if I wanna do that really strong line like Sam has behind, I wanna make sure I don't draw them on my pairs. So now I'm gonna use my line, my marker to draw a line going from one side of the paper to the other. And I'm gonna stop every time I hit a pair line like that. And that gives the illusion of pairs actually sitting on a table. If I wanted to get fancy, I could draw a big oval underneath the pairs and that would make it look like they're sitting on a plate. I'm drawing a big oval. And again, every time I hit a pair line, I'm gonna stop. And I'll draw another oval, a little bit smaller to make it look like a plate. Now comes the fun part. Now that I've drawn that out, and again, you do not have to use marker, it's just easier for the video to see. Now we're gonna have fun adding color. Now, I will not finish this entire thing right now, but I will get, you, get us started and you can always continue later. My favorite pairs are the Bosque pairs, so those yellowy brown ones. The first thing I'm going to do is use my oil pastels to color in an entire pair. One of the really cool things about oil pastels that we can see with Sam's work is that he doesn't just leave things one color. He uses more colors in the shape. So I'm going to add some brown on top of it on the bottom, then maybe a little on the side. And then I'm gonna use the yellow again to sort of blend it together. Make it a little wiggly. Sometimes there's a little bit of green. So I'll add a little bit of green here. And I could do this with all of my pairs. One of the things that Sam does is use really bright colors. And he uses colors that are not like each other. So he might use a bright color and a dark color, or he might use colors that are very different from each other, like purple and green or blue and orange. So you can see I'm doing the same thing with these other pairs where I did the yellow. Now I'm adding the brown. If you are not as fast as me, don't worry. I've been doing this for a long time and I've probably drawn more pairs than you've eaten. So. I would add those colors, add a little bit of green. And then what color do we think we want to have our plate or our background? Let's see. I'm going to go with red for my background because I think that will show really well. Oh yeah, look at that red. So this is an example of how you can really make artwork that pops. Now, my black lines are a little bit thin. If I wanted to be more like Sam, I might add thicker black lines. 
So I think I'll do that after I get these, this black, I mean, this red started behind there. So to make it a little bit thicker, I would take my black and just go over some of those lines, really make it pop. And the pears do also have stems. So that's something that I might add. I'm only going to add these really thick black lines after I've colored on both sides. And that's because with, with these art supplies, I don't want them to get all sort of gooey and messy. I'm going to make my plate blue. I chose three primary colors. I'm wondering what all of yours look like or what you're thinking of doing later. So I'm adding these colors. Again, you don't have to just stick with one color. You can add more colors to it. So I think on this plate, I'm going to add a little bit of green, make it a little more interesting. And to make it fun, I'm going to have a purple table. So this is just an example of how Sam would work. Uh, maybe not his exact process, but he does do some outlining first, and then he would color in you know, the shapes after using the lines. Now, when we were creating this, we used both um, wiggly lines and we used straight lines. So all of my squiggly fun people out there probably had fun drawing the pairs. And all of my straight line lovers probably liked drawing the table line and some of the plate more than the other ones. We'll see here, I'm just gonna add the rest of these black lines on. And then we'll have a somewhat finished piece of art. Although we see I did not go all the way to the edge. We can always add lines to add more detail. So if I wanted to add something like a design all around the plate, I could do that. Or maybe a couple little wiggles on my pairs. Then the last thing you wanna make sure you do, sign your name. That way, you know you're finished. It's officially a piece of artwork and you're good to go. You could even take a picture of it and make it a profile picture or um, just have fun with it and put it up in your house. I'm going to switch my camera back. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty fun. <laughs> there we go. So that was just a really quick, um, fun time to sort of, oh, there we go. Uh, to see how Sam would work and how artists use lines and colors to help make things just be really bold and fun. Thank you so much to Open Door Arts. And now the moment that we've all been waiting for, inducting our 2022 awardees. We will now turn to celebrating the accomplishments and achievements, the commitment and dedication of our outstanding and remarkable mentors and participants across all of PYD programs. For the award ceremony, we will have pre-recorded introductions of the awards by the PYD team and then pre-recorded acceptance remarks from the honorees. We have a total of five awards, which will be presented to five outstanding participants in PYD programs this year. To give you a brief overview of the award categories, 
we will present the mentor of the year, which is awarded to a mentor each year who exemplifies PYD's mission to create a world where young people with disabilities lead lives that are filled with dignity, pride, and purpose. The LENS Mentor of the Year Award recognizes an outstanding mentor in Project LENS, which is a segment of our mentoring program that is run in collaboration with Massachusetts Commission for the Blind. The Greg Dees and Anita McCann Entrepreneurship Award was created in honor of two luminaries in social entrepreneurship and business. They both took an interest in PYD in various ways. Greg was a former PYD president and Greg and Anita were both professional colleagues at Harvard Business School. The award recognizes an exemplary participant in our career readiness programs. The Chris Dunn Peer Leadership Award is dedicated in memory of a wonderful young man who was instrumental to the PYD community as a leader in our group mentoring programs and one of the first intergenerational matches. He always tackled challenges head on with determination and a smile. And the final award is the Raylene Leske Spirit Award, which was created to honor the life and memory of a remarkable young woman. As a participant, peer leader, and later a mentor in PYD programs, Raylene shared her optimistic spirit with everyone. So we are extremely proud of our awardees and so excited to spotlight them. I will now turn it over to our pre-recorded remarks, which will start out with Jordi Loam, PYD's Match Support Manager, introducing the first category. I am pleased to introduce PYD's Mentor of the Year to Lynn Pais. Lynn has been an active mentor of the PYD community since signing up in mid-2018. In fact, Lynn and Zachary, her mentee, were one of my first matches when I began my role as a mentoring specialist. And to see that they are still actively engaged and involved in PYD in addition to their mentorship today is something incredibly meaningful to me and a testament to our mission at PYD to make long lasting positive mentor matches. As a mentor, Lynn has consistently demonstrated drive, enthusiasm, and motivation in supporting her mentee and PYD's mission. With her background in action oriented nature, Lynn was determined to help an equally goal oriented mentee reach their potential and find success in their strengths. Thankfully, we had a mentee who was just as determined to find a job and needed a motivating mentor to guide him in meeting his goal. Both his and Lynn's drive helped create a strong mentorship who are always involved in our advocacy and mentoring workshops and willing to explore new opportunities together. Lynn's greatest passion and goal in life is to help improve health care for everyone by working together with others. Lynn has also been involved in many of our advocacy projects, training pilots, and more, and has been an invaluable member in providing feedback to improve our programs. Mentors of the year are folks who have gone above and beyond in their match, and also illustrate how strong mentorships can still stick together years after they meet. I can say of a lot of amazing things about Lynn, but I would like to even more to have her mentee, Zachary Jacobson, describe the relationship and the impact Lynn has made on him and the PYD community. I will say to you, Lynn and to Zachary, I am so proud of you both and I am excited to learn about your amazing opportunities and accomplishments. Thank you.
Lin should be mentor of the year because of the, the all the things we did. Like, for example, we went to like coffee shops, restaurants, picnics, and we did some karaoke. And she's been involved in two of our events. Lynn has helped me uh, and my goals by uh, learning about what makes a good employee. I can't. I can't think of anything. I. I. I, I can imagine how hard it would be without Lynn as my mentor, like her support and friendship. Thank you, PYD, for recognizing me as Mentor of the Year. This is a very special honor for me. I must call out my amazing mentee, Zachary, without whom this would not have been possible. Zach, your energy and enthusiasm for life is contagious. You have worked very hard over the years, and together we have accomplished so much. And we've had a ton of fun along the way. Today, I would also like to thank PYD for helping me realize and develop my inner strengths. From my personal experiences, I have come to see how investing in youth sets the foundation for a strong community. PYD's mentorship program imbibes this vision by creating a safe and wonderful space for youths of many abilities to grow into strong adults. I have also come to see how each one of us has unique talents to share with the world. So I say to all the mentors and mentees out there today, believe in yourself and believe in the person next to you. You make this world a better place for everyone. Thank you. Hello, it's David Darkangelo, Commissioner for the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind. And I'm so thankful to Partners for Youth with Disabilities and their continued collaboration with our community. I'm so pleased to present the award for Lens Mentor of the Year during January National Mentoring Month. Mentoring plays an important role in the career success of people we serve at MCB who are blind and visually impaired. A mentor provides employment advice, educational support, networking, and friendship to a mentee. More than that, mentor-mentee relationships are built upon a foundation of shared experiences that help one another overcome challenges and recognize career potential. In my own career, I was fortunate to have mentors along the way who were there for me when I had questions about my next steps and the path ahead involving my disability. In 2015, MCB formed a collaboration for Partners for Youth with Disabilities to operate a statewide comprehensive mentoring program, formally called Project Linking Expertise and Networking for Success, now otherwise known as Project Lens. Lens aims to match youth who are blind with adult mentors who share a similar disability and offer support for their career goals and personal development. And we are proud to celebrate the contributions of one of those mentors today, who is very familiar to us at MCB as an alum of our annual internship program and a former panelist for our internship opening ceremony. Without further ado, the Lens Mentor of the Year is Justin Proctor. Congratulations, Justin. Justin began his journey as a mentor at PYD during the summer of 2020. After being referred by Joey Buzon, our employment services supervisor, Joe thought Justin would be a great mentor due to his positive outlook and ability to pass it forward. Also, Justin had reached a point in his career where he was ready and able to give back. Justin is currently successfully employed as a contracting specialist with the General Services Administration Technology Transformation Services. Since then, 
Justin has mentored two youth as they develop their skills to thrive in the workforce. Justin is originally from Hawaii, but moved to Massachusetts where he obtained his BA in psychology and sociology and an MBA from Suffolk University. When Justin isn't working, he enjoys staying active by traveling around the world to try all types of cuisine and he is especially passionate about rock climbing. Congratulations, Justin, as this year's recipient of the Lens Mentoring Award. Thank you for your passion for mentorship, for your commitment to career success for the individuals we serve with disabilities. You're an inspiration to many, and we're grateful for all that you do to make inclusive employment a priority for our community. To learn more about PYD and LENS, please visit PYD.org. To learn more about the services we provide at MCB, visit mass.gov forward slash MCB. Thank you. Congratulations again, Justin. And I hope you all have a great day. I'm always kind of shy when it comes to recognition um well you know in the bigger picture i think what it really means is that this kind of work is important and um there is a need for it and you know i really appreciate you know being part of it and you know having the mentee recognizing me for that but you know on a bigger scale i i think it's awesome that you know people can you know there's a need for it and that people can recognize it you know in some form like this i really appreciate it <laughs> really wanted to be a mentor because i know how important it is and i know how many mentors i've had over the years be part of that process for me and um i very happy in the career that i am in now and what i'm doing and continue to do i still have a long way to go but definitely a big part of that was a lot of the mentors that i have and no matter how old you are and how far in your career or your personal life you are you can never have you know too many or you can never have enough mentors or you know those folks there still guiding you as you know much as you learned and continue to learn it's still a process so having people who either look like you or can um relate to the same kind of challenges that you do i think is motivating and you know, like i said for me i've had a lot of mentors growing up that were great and i'm still in touch with a lot of them um that helped me in my career but um i also realized the importance of having somebody who like if for me as a blind person if i had more of a mentor like that maybe um it would have been helpful more um early on that you know maybe i would have had less challenges getting to where i am or being able to kind of talk to somebody who can uh relate to those experiences and walk me through and talk me through and um and i think that everybody should be able to have that hello everyone i am so excited to present the greg dees and anita mcgann career readiness award to this year's recipient jillian howland jillian exemplifies the power of self-advocacy and determination I first had the pleasure of working with Jillian in our after school career readiness programming. From her very first sessions, it was clear that Jillian was motivated to learn and interested in utilizing all of the resources available to her. Over the course of her time in our after school program, Jillian was always engaged in our workshops, asking questions, sharing her experiences, and generally contributing to the camaraderie that is virtual learning. As Jillian was wrapping up with our after school programming, it became obvious to everyone that Jillian was more than ready for an internship placement. Jillian went on to serve as an intern with PYD's National Disability Mentoring Coalition. 
I was lucky to continue working with Jillian through this process, and it's safe to say that Jillian thrived in her internship role. Jillian used the opportunity to exhibit her strong writing skills and expand her knowledge of the nonprofit world. She was so successful that her supervisor asked to extend her position. Jillian's confidence, poise, and composure is truly beyond her years. I'm confident that Jillian will continue to make her mark on her community, and I'm once again proud to present Jillian Howland with this year's Greg Deese and Anita McGannon Entrepreneurship Award. I am so honored to be nominated for the Art News and Anita McMahon Entrepreneurship Award. I am thrilled that the PYD staff did so highly of me and appreciate my work ethic. I really enjoyed working with Chanel Thomas for my internship writing blog posts for the PYD newsletter. Chanel was always very positive, listened to my ideas, and said I was punctual, which made me feel fantastic. Olivia Harris called me once a week to see how I was doing with the internship and asked me questions about that. Each question was on a scale of one to five. And I answered four and five for the most part, for most of the questions. Chanel agreed, and it felt very reassuring that we were on the same page. In the project program, I love listening to different people with disabilities talk about their career. Of course, all thanks to Becca Cronin, who got me in the program and facilitated me doing an internship for PYD. PYD has impacted my life because I now have a job working at Nick's Sporting Goods. I have a lot of experience with interviews because I was so adamant in finding a job. First of all, I'm now starting an internship at the Northeast Art, helping adults with intellectual disabilities find jobs. I feel confident enough in myself to help other people be confident and succeed in the workforce. The Chris Dunn Peer Leadership Award is dedicated in memory of a young man who was intelligent, resourceful, helpful, and patient among many other positive qualities. Chris Dunn was a mentee who then became a mentor and one of PYD's first intergenerational matches. Chris has brought the community together in a number of ways, including hosting an annual holiday party. I'm pleased to announce Anna Weinberger as this year's recipient of the Chris Dunn Peer Leadership Award. And Anna shares so many of Chris's positive qualities. She is an extremely hard worker and was one of the very first fellows in PYD's inaugural Young Leaders Rising program. And as the first, she helped us to recruit other fellows in that cohort and participants for the program. In fact, she helped us collectively do 21 pages of outreach to community organizations to spread the word about this new program. She has brought the community together through planning events at YLR and bringing positive energy and support to every meeting and every interaction. In the Youth Leadership Forum this summer, she co-moderated a panel discussion with disabilities rights leader, Judy Human. 
We are grateful for Anna's leadership and the positive impact that she has had and continues to have on the community. Anna is disciplined. She honored her duties as, as a Wild Fellow, respected the rules, and treated PYD staff, co-workers, and participants with honor, dignity, and respect. Anna was and is willing to step in and help in roles outside of her responsibilities. When PYD has called her to participate in other roles outside of YLR, she has always and will always be willing to lend her time to help PYD out. Anna never has had to be reminded of her duties and responsibilities and would even sub in for other people on her team. Her uplifting and positive energy is something to always be remembered for. Anna always comes in with a positive attitude and is willingness and eager to help others out. She is kind and well-mannered and even under difficult difficult circumstances, she remains poised. She provides positive reinforcement to her colleagues along with the participants. Congratulations, Anna. Congratulations, Anna. I feel that this award, um, what this award means to me is um, that I feel like um, I've worked hard for this award, that um, I've taken my job as a peer leader um, seriously and that I've impacted um, a lot of people's lives. I think how PYD has impacted my life is um, it's given me um, a better understanding on um, how to find a job um, and how to keep a job um, and how even though a lot of people, advocates of disabilities, I've done a lot to help with those that had different disabilities that, that there's still a long way to go. And um, it's our job to really try to um, educate um, people both with and without disabilities. I really appreciate all the help from the, um, the staff that, that were my mentors um, throughout the program. Um, I especially like to thank uh, Kristen Humphrey and Carl Cindy, who are my managers that have done such a great job in guiding me through helping um, the, the younger folks, the, the students, and um, helping kind of helping me throughout, you know, how to find a job and other aspects of life and helping other people um, find their voice, finding out what they're good at and um, using their skills that they learned um like to generalize the skills and to um really make a difference the raylene lisky spirit award was created to honor the life and memory of a remarkable young woman raylene was a close friend and when you were around her you were struck by her wonderful ability to find pure joy in everyday experiences. As a participant peer leader and later a mentor in PYD programs, Raylene shared her optimistic spirit with everyone. This is especially true when she was in access to theater. Raylene loved sharing her artistic voice and helping others develop theirs. Raylene was fully committed to every character she played, whether it was Santa Claus, a mother whose house had just burned down, or a magical fairy. When she was playing these characters, nothing else mattered. She was just so happy and completely in the moment. Cassidy shares Raylene's commitment to characters and to the ATT group as a whole. He frequently adds very specific details to whatever scene or character that he is in. He also helps other group members become immersed in their characters by helping them figure out what a character might use or feel in a particular scene. Just like Raylene, Cassidy always shows up for the group and gives 100%. Congratulations to Cassidy on receiving this award. It is definitely well-deserved. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Cassidy, who has been nominated for the Rainy Leske Spirit Award for 2021. I met Cassidy at Roxbury Community College four years ago, and he had expressed interest in being a part of 
the theater program. And uh, like Raylene, who I had the honor to know, Cassidy is outgoing, thoughtful, extremely creative, and above all, he's a team player. Please join me as we congratulate him on getting the 2021 Really Leske Spirit Award. Thank you. I want to thank you for making me this year's recipient. And it's nice being recognized for my work here at ATT or access to theater. I think I've learned so much from ATT and I have made a little poem that I hope that everyone can relate of what I've learned. I call it the meaning of ATT, access to theater. I've learned how to be a team leader being welcoming to mentees and mentors, sharing my ideas to the group, but also listening toward others. I'm learning how to compromise from when we all disagree and making a scene of part work, and that's thanks to me. The mentor has accepted me and took me in. I too do the same as the new class begin. I learned how to communicate by raising my voice. When someone is unsure, they ask for my choice. Learn how to trust myself by having self-confidence, being able to do things myself. All of us learn some independence. Acceptance is key when starting the new day. It's important for this new year. Let's hope we keep it that way, for I'm glad that I'm here. Wow, what a powerful and moving community. Thank you so much to all of our presenters and honorees. We are so grateful for you and the impact that you've had on the community. And thank you so much to the Mentor Appreciation Night Planning Committee, including Sapphire Events, our board of directors, our PYD volunteers, staff and supporters, and to everyone here tonight for being part of our community. If you would like, you're welcome to make a donation in honor of this evening's awardees. And as Regina mentioned earlier, we're so fortunate to have a dollar for dollar match on all donations associated with this campaign. And as a reminder, we've also extended the deadline for the peer-to-peer -peer campaign for a chance to win some fabulous prizes and to help us move mentoring forward. And next, I would also encourage you to attend our interactive after party we will have the following breakout rooms, a music room that is hosted by Deep Chinapa, a trivia room hosted by Emma Khan and Becca Cronin. And then we will also have a just chill room. So thank you all so much for attending. We are wishing you a fantastic evening and mentoring month.